Are we alone in the universe? If there are millions of galaxies, planets and stars in space, why would intelligent life exist only on Earth? These questions and others about unidentified flying objects, UFOs, and the existence of aliens spark the interest and curiosity of many people, including Christians. But is there any basis for all of this, or is it merely part of human imagination? In today's video, I want to discuss UFOs, unidentified flying objects, and aliens with you. Does the Bible mention anything about the existence of extraterrestrial beings? Before we delve into this subject, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell to receive updates whenever I post a new video. Alright, let's get started. Thanks to cinema and its science fiction films, numerous speculations about UFOs and extraterrestrials have emerged worldwide in the past 70 years. Additionally, thousands of people from different parts of the world have reported seeing lights from spacecraft and other strange objects in the sky. There are also those who claim to have had some form of contact with unknown beings, resembling humans. And as if that wasn't enough, the theory of intelligent life existing beyond Earth gained further momentum when NASA researchers announced in 1996 that they had found organic material cells in a meteorite allegedly from Mars. This led the scientific community to assert the discovery of life beyond our planet. Consequently, millions of people began firmly believing in the existence of these extraterrestrials, with some arguing that the Bible itself mentions UFO sightings and beings from other planets. One of the most cited passages is the vision of the prophet Ezekiel, described in chapter 1 of the book of Ezekiel. Let's read what is written in that passage. I looked, and I saw a windstorm coming out of the north, an immense cloud with flashing lightning and surrounded by brilliant light. The center of the fire looked like glowing metal, and in the fire was what looked like four living creatures. In appearance, their form was human. When the creatures moved, they also moved. When the creatures stood still, they also stood still. And when the creatures rose from the ground, the wheels rose along with them, because the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Spread out above the heads of the living creatures was what looked something like a vault, sparkling like crystal and awesome. When we carefully analyze it, we can see that this passage truly describes a supernatural event. However, it is not related to extraterrestrial beings or UFOs. What the prophet Ezekiel witnessed on that occasion was the physical manifestation of God's glory. The living creatures mentioned were cherubim, not alien entities. Furthermore, the chariot referred to does not signify a spacecraft or flying saucer, but rather represents the spiritual authority of the Lord. Another argument often used by those who advocate for the existence of intelligent life on other planets is the vastness of space. They question why God would create so many galaxies if he did not intend to populate them. Nevertheless, this theory is also refuted by the Bible. Let's read what is written in Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. God created the universe, the planets, and the stars so that His power and glory could be contemplated, not for various forms of life to inhabit it. And even though people may not believe what the Bible says on this matter, science itself proves that it is impossible for human-like life to exist outside of Earth. Among hundreds of things, consider what would be necessary for another planet to be habitable for any other intelligent living being. First, a star of approximately the same size and age as the Sun. Second, having a similar size to Earth and the same composition, inclination, and distance from its star. Third, having an atmosphere similar to ours, which is highly complex. Fourth, having a significant amount of water in a liquid state. And you might be wondering now, but pastor, if all this is true, how do we explain the lights, the strange objects, and even the beings that people claim to have seen in the sky and on earth? Is it all a lie? Not exactly. The vast majority of UFO sightings can be explained by natural phenomena. According to scientists, about 95% of the unidentified flying objects that people claim to see are nothing more than stars, distant aircraft landing lights, atmospheric gases, weather balloons, satellites, small airships, launched rockets, and many other phenomena. 
In other words, there is usually a simple explanation for these sightings, and only 5% of the sightings are genuinely questionable. Objects move at extremely high speeds in the sky without making any noise. They change shape, color, and size, and in some cases, they even disappear. There are also reports of people being abducted or having some other type of contact with them. So how do we explain these 5%? It's very simple. The Bible reveals the existence of beings that resemble humans and inhabit the spiritual realm. However, their origin has nothing to do with distant planets. They are part of a spiritual sphere connected to this earth. In Ephesians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul states that they are powers and dominions of darkness and spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. In other words, they are demons. This means that these supernatural manifestations, seemingly without explanation, are demonic forces masquerading as extraterrestrial beings. The Bible affirms that the enemy has the power to assume any form, even disguising himself as an angel of light. And why do they do this? To deceive people and prevent them from believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's see what the Apostle Paul wrote about how the devil acts by performing marvelous and supernatural deeds. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. Satan and his demons know that the battle is already lost and that Jesus will return to earth soon to destroy his evil rule and send him to hell. That's why he wants to take as many people as possible with him, and this interest and even worship of extraterrestrial beings are one of his many weapons for that, as they make people put their faith, which should be in God, in creatures that don't even exist. Therefore, my brothers, we cannot let ourselves be deceived. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We are not truly alone in the universe, but this company does not come from distant planets and galaxies, but from the spiritual realm. There is an enemy who wants to destroy us, but there is also a God full of power and mercy who desires to have an intimate relationship with us. He is not an extraterrestrial, meaning a being outside of Earth. He is the God who created the entire universe, who sent his Son to dwell among us and reconcile us with him through the death and resurrection of Jesus. If you like this message, Share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. May God bless you more and more.